So I have two already picked out for what we're going to do. This is one. This one I have wanted to do for a while. Gotta hold on. I'm gonna move it here. This is one I I when I saw one of Bob's like paintings of it, I uh, I really wanted to do it. Kind of situation. And uh, you'll see in a minute to why. Um, surprisingly, I have, again, chosen two very dark ones. I know this is very bright, but imagine that this is supposed to be like this, because that's how it is on his thing. Um, but we have to do it like this, or else it doesn't work. This is the one thing about digital art that I do hate, which is that sometimes some things just do not work right. As much as it, we would like it to work differently. Oh my gosh, wait. Bot, did you send? Oh my gosh. It looks so beautiful. I love it so much. You know what the funny thing is? Is why do I keep putting myself in crop tops when I actually never wear crop tops? <laughs> I'm not liking it though. It can be better. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I wish I could render like you could. So to me, this looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, I'm gonna say one thing though. Um. Even I sometimes hate how my model looks, and sometimes it's just from you staring at it for so long. Uh, so what I do is I put it away. Like, I actually haven't looked at my model for over a month. And I looked at it, and I was, like, really looking at it, and I was like, you know what? This actually isn't bad. Why did I think that this was awful and that I should redo it? So it's like, you know... You gotta step away for a day or two and then come back to it and usually usually you'll you'll oh my god my is there now an eyelash in my eye oh my god my entire my entire stream is just gonna be me trying to figure out how the fuck to, there we go oh my gosh <laughs> we're having so many problems today oh my goodness oh my gosh My eyes are watery from having an allergic reaction to the smells. <laughs> but I, I, I like it. Uh, I've been drawing it. I have not been drawing in so long. Will you send me some old work to preview? Oh, oh, you want... Oh, uh... Send me some... Wait, what? Wait, so, uh, we'll send you yeah, some old work uh, preview. Oh, okay. Damn. Damn. Damn, Spike Bot, what the fuck? <laughs> I love your art style, man. Or woman, whoever, whatever. I love your style, it's so nice. What's some. <laughs> if you hear me say damn, if any artist like opens up your stuff and says damn, uh, that usually means it's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, I want to do fan art, uh, the fan art of you justice. <laughs> do you, well, <laughs> let me, let me just, let me just tell you something. It's okay. Cause sometimes I don't draw myself in justice. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. Uh, sometimes 
you do you do not want to know how many sketches and progress work I went through in order to just get to this free debut. You do not want to know how long I have stared at my own models over and over again and redesigned them so much. And and trust me, like some of them I did like great work and some of them are just awful shit. And uh let me just say this. I don't care if my art if someone draws a fan art of me as like a little stick figure made by like my five-year-old cousin. I'm still gonna put it on the fridge, you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna still put it on the fridge because I appreciate any art. <laughs> and I as an artist that is a perfectionist, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you're just like, I wanna make sure I do this justice. But <laughs> at the same time, it looks so great already. I'm just like, wow. I will I will say one thing. The size of my chest you did get right. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys how, what size I am in chess. If you want to clip this, go ahead. My chest size, my actual chest size is a 36G. I am a G. A G. If you don't know the rankings, it goes A, B, C, D, double D, triple D. And I think it's like F, I, and then F, I, G then H. I'm literally before an H cup. <laughs> and most people when they look at me, they think I'm like a double D or like a triple D and uh I I grew out of those. <laughs> but my 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 boobs are so big that yes, it does make the crop top actually go away from my body. <laughs> it's like even crop tops that are supposed to be stuck to your skin, yeah, no, they still hang. <laughs> That's also kind of why I don't wear crop tops because a little light wind could breeze by and then flash everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and <laughs> I did not know they the puff tee. <laughs> yes, they they do. Um. So make the shirter short. No, don't, don't make the shirter shorter. It's already short enough. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, no, please. You know, the funny thing is that I'm giving my model stuff that I would never wear, but I would, I, I would feel I have the confidence to wear, but when I try it on, I have no fucking confidence to wear it. I'm gonna be honest, this maid outfit, in all honesty, I probably would never fucking wear it. If I if I was if I really had a maid outfit and I went to a convention and I had a maid outfit with me, I probably would not wear it. I would rather wear anything else. I would rather wear a trash bag than wear a fucking maid outfit. Because my body positivity is fucking shit. <laughs> It's so, it's weird. It's weird because I can look. <laughs> Gave my model something I would never wear all the time. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, like, okay, I'm gonna be honest. The crop tops, I have worn crop tops in the past. But what I'm more concerned of is it blowing up and flashing everybody. That's what I'm more concerned about than, than actually the crop, the crop top itself. Um... I am starting to get used to it. I've always been a bigger person. I've always been a little bit on the bigger side. So double-sided tape is a lifesaver. I know, right? I know. <laughs> Thing is, the double-sided tape I have is a little a little too strong, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the cause the double-sided tape I have is like probably should not should not be used in the sense of what we what we need what i actually need to work on with the of a lisbon crim oh okay sorry i just wanted to test to make sure 
Sorry, that was Bob. <laughs> I was just trying to check to make sure that the audio was all set up. <laughs> yeah, the I have double-sided tape, but the double-sided tape is mainly for like hanging up stuff. So it's mostly like to uh for like renters so that the paint doesn't come off. Uh the thing about that is no, the paint will come off no matter what you fucking do. I <laughs> I know from experience. Um Uh, but yeah, so <clears throat> uh, yeah, but the pain of hanging anything on the wall. I know. I do need to put up some shelves. The one thing I want in the in in my room is a lot of shelves, a lot of shelving, so I can display all my stuff. I'm already starting to out outgrow it with all the stuff I do have. Um, I really need shelves, but I also have stuff I need to hang up, but I can't hang them up until the shelves are up and I don't have shelves so I need to put the shelves up to see how much room I have and then once the shelves are up then I can put the 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 the, the prints that I have up <laughs> my office also on one side of it like over here over on this side is just a fucking mess I need to clean it up a little bit it's not that much of a mess but it's just kind of like there's a lot of trash and i need to take it out <laughs> i need to take i need to actually take the trash out but yeah <clears throat> all right i think i have what we need ish together uh so we are going to uh be making this is called waterfall in the woods but i called it forest waterfall crimson cause... and phthalo blue to make a lavender sort of to the bluish side and with that we're going to do a fantastic little waterfall so i hope you enjoy this one so we're going to be making some Shoot, waterfalls we'll use this little tiny two inch brush and yeah, let me just turn bob down a little bit some titanium white I like these kind of paintings because they they work so nice. This black I want to be to get some titanium white. Ever seen. We'll put a little of that white on there. Let's go up here. And maybe our light source is going to be right up here above the waterfall. So take the white. Now, there's very little color up here. The clear allows you to put just a almost like a glaze. There's not a great deal. We don't have clear, Bob. We're, We're too poor for that. that. No, it's joking. So much <laughs> that when you put white on there, it turns <laughs> colors too strong. Anyway, Watch here, though, because it's such a small amount of paint, I want to create the illusion of light shining through here. And by just taking a little of that titanium white and making like little crisscross strokes, we can do that. Very little color on the canvas. Now, you could do this several times to achieve a desired lightness if you wanted to. If you wanted this to be brighter, well, I'll show you. Take a little more white. We want it to be a little brighter right This now. is me just making one yeah, stroke, by the way. Light. See, it already, it looks like there's light just... I sent you a picture of my here. sad desk? Oh no, not the sad desk. Make some very interesting paintings. And you can pull it a little if you want to really make it look like light rays zaying through. There's no limit to this. There we go. All right, so we have our, we have our light source now. Now, without even cleaning the brush, I'll just go right back into that lavender color I was using to cover the canvas with oh no I, I've, I've i and hold on blue much more crimson than blue though but it's still i must i must see blue this so much stronger than the crimson hold on bob we're gonna I'm pause you a minute on hold on if that i have to do oh my god oh my god <laughs> oh my god wait what are you e wait is that 
Is that a cheesecake? Is that a cheesecake? On your on your desk. Also, I like how you can see my stream. Is that a, an or an Oreo cake? Ice cream or cheesecake? <laughs> we, we must know ice cream or cheesecake. What is this on your desk? Oh my! Look at the amount of fucking paint. More like ice cream. Oh, okay, okay, good. Ice cream cake is good. Cheesecake, fuck that. Um, I hate cheesecakes. I'm gonna say it. I do. And uh, to anyone that goes, no, how could you hate cheesecakes? Okay, just I just don't like cheesecakes. I hate the texture. I hate the texture of cheesecakes. Um, I've tried cheesecake multiple times, and I still dislike the texture of it. There may be a day where I find that actually I do like it. The day is not that day. I don't like cheesecake alone. Has to oh, it has to be something. I had it with a uh, with like a cherry or some kind of topping. It was it was a type of topping. Oh, look at that! So beautiful, and eerie. To the brush here, and it still had the white on it that we had just used, so it's a it's a little lighter. Okay, let's go up in here. Now maybe back in here we have all kind of little tree shapes and stuff. So let's just start thinking about little trees that live way back here. We don't want these to be too dark yet. We want these to be very subdued, very quiet, because they're right in that strong light that's coming through there. So all we're looking for here initially is some very basic little shapes of some happy little trees that live back in here. There we go. I'm going to make a smaller. Very basic little shapes. Maybe there's a few more little things living in here. Wherever you think they should be. No, so not the exactly size. The size can be small. Just sort of let your imagination just go wild. It's what's so fantastic about painting. You can create any kind of world that you want. Oh my gosh, it's like oh, not painting it. Holy shit. It's hanging over there. Now then, shoot, I'll just use that same old brush. I'm lazy. I don't want to clean it. Take a little bit of the titanium white on there. And we'll put a few little highlights on some of these that are far back in here. The lights zinging through here. These are going to be very light and bright. Begin thinking about shaping. Light. There. Now then, maybe as we work a little closer, tell you what, let's be oh, picking out a few. This is the one problem. This is the one problem that I dislike is because you're supposed to get like a textured, a textured look with some of the stuff. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to use the fan brush instead of what he's using because I literally can't get it to look like that. Because he's using like a, a two inch brush uh, and he's using like the edge of it. But I can't do that. Uh, it can be hard with digital. Yeah, digital is very, is very, very hard to make, uh, to make any kind of. Bob Ross painting with. But there is again a way to do it. Um, It's just, you have to change your brush, basically. And then you have to keep changing the size of it to different. 
the different sizes that could fit within what is needed. Will it look weird and different? Yeah, but that's that's sometimes how you have to do it. Uh, that's a half of, yeah. Three limbs and little sticks and twigs that live in there. So we'll take some paint thinner and a liner brush and go into that same identical color. Think about trunks and sticks. There. If you had trouble making this flow, add a little bit more of the paint thinner, that's all. That's all. Okay. You're gonna, you can make as many or as few as you want in your world. Wherever you think there should be a little stick or a twig, that's where you want it. And this paint should flow just as easy, almost like you were using a pen in writing. If it doesn't flow like that, chances are you don't have quite enough thinner on the brush. We'll take a little, little more of that titanium white, a little more of that lavender color. Now then, come back in here, and let's begin picking out little individual clumps of things that live on these trees. Little tiny things. See? There. Wherever you think they should be. Darker, darker, darker. Over here on the left, because not as much light's going to strike over there. Takes a very little paint to do this particular part. Very little. Maybe. Let's add a little, a little more color. Maybe right down in here, there's some things that just sort of, maybe they just sort of hang over like this. I don't know. Just sort of let, let your brush take you there. Little things right down. I don't know. I really don't know. You can just sort of pick out all these little things that you like in here. And just begin working with shapes and forms. Let all these little things happen. Think about all the little creatures that live out here, little squirrels and bunny rabbits and just, just hundreds and thousands of little things live in here. There. Okay, there's another one. All right. But already you have so many layers there that create the illusion of depth and distance in your painting. for some nice individual shapes in there. There. Okay. There then. I don't know what it is, but it, it's it something. It do, it kind of does look like trees at a distance. Maybe back in here you can just, this should be almost identically the same color as what you have up there. Just want to put the indication of some things way back in there. That you just barely can see. They're far away. And all we're doing is just tapping on some basic little shapes. And let me add in. Lesson. Probably the most fun thing to do here is the waterfall, of course. So let's do that. Let's do that. We'll take a one inch brush and we'll dip it into a little bit of the liquid clear. Just a small amount. Just a small amount. We'll go through some titanium white. Hey, yo, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck I did, but I really made it look like it's back there. In fact, I may put a little more. Let me dip the brush into it just a tiny bit more. There. All right. That's nice. You can feel it when you pull the brush across. It should be slick. Saw so there were trees even up it. close. Oh, okay. Well, some sometimes, like, it just looks like... Whisper. Whisper. Okay. Let's go up in here. Now, if our waterfall lives right here, let the water sort of come along like this and then, shoo, and fall. Let it fall. Okay, I do actually have a better brush that I can use that doesn't go. fuck up as much. There. Let me add a touch more blue to that. I want, it, I want it just a little more to the blue side. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Hope you can see what a difference that makes. There. Yeah, let's make it this bigger. Yeah. 
we can take a clean... hey, hold, hold on bob hold on bob my i want my waterfall big i want a big waterfall bob oh my gosh hold on And I might go back in. All right. So what? There you go. And then take a, we actually do have a dry brush. Pull up. Make it look like the, the mist at the bottom. We're gonna take some more. Gonna do brush. This one. one. There is a there's like one of these brushes that actually does blending. I forget which one it is. Definitely not. No. Oh, the only the other option that I got. Really click this. Where is it? Okay. 
There we go. Creating a little bit of mist. Two inch brush and from the bottom lift upward and smooth that and blend it until it's just as smooth as glass. That clear will allow you to just make it so smooth. And maybe, maybe down here toward the base, maybe there's some mist. We'll just take a little white paint, very small amount, right on the tip of the brush. And let's just put the indication here of a little foam. If water falls that far, you're going to have mist that's floating around here. And just no way you can get away from it. If water falls that far, you're certainly going to have mist. There. Already that sort of looks like it's laying in a, hmm, a little cloud almost. That's what we're looking for. Maybe in our world, maybe there's a nice tree over here on this <laughs> side. But you start with the thing that's the farthest away and you work forward. So let's take a little dark sienna. Oh, I'll reach over here and get a little white, thin it down a little. We'll use the liner brush. A little bit more of the dark sienna. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe there's a little tree trunk that lives right in here. And just wiggle that brush, turn it. As you let it come down, so you get all of those. So it's taking a little shapes. bit of a. It's not just a detail. It's not just a future telephone pole living here. And this he's taken form and shape, character. Let's see. And he takes Van Dyke. Apart, you're certainly going to have. And just wiggle that brush. But you start with the thing that's the farthest to foam. If water falls that far, you're going to. We'll use the liner brush. Okay, so he took some Van Dyke brown and white. Okay. That's what he did. Maybe there's a little tree trunk that lives right in here. And just wiggle that brush, turn it as you let it come down. So you get all of those fantastic little shapes. It's not just it's not just a future telephone pole living here. This this tree has form and shape, character. He's a nice tree. Hmm. Very nice little tree. There he is. Okay. Now maybe And he wants here, me to wiggle it. Much light striking. Let's use that same old brush, even lazy. Take a little sap green, a little bit of cad yellow. Reach up here and grab a little of that midnight black. That'll, ooh, there, see how? Makes a beautiful dark green. Push that brush. Load that little ridge of paint right out on the edge of the bristle. That's an excellent shot there. You can really see there. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, I want to have nice leafy things that are hanging right over here. Just begin with a corner of the brush and then begin creating this illusion. This is what's so fantastic about having the black gesso on there. Automatically, this just happens because you have your dark color underneath already. You could do this on a white canvas, but you'd, whew, oh, you'd work yourself to death trying to get that, that much dark in there. See? And here, the black gesso puts that all in there for you. Okay. There. So he wants me to get some. Some green. Okay, let's go up here. Stop green and yellow. We are going to do use this brush again. Because, again, pattern. Oh, cancel. Uh, how's like pattern? Mm. Ooh, I have an idea. Okay. Um, do 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 do. We're going to grab that. Stop green. A little bit.
think I messed up this brush accidentally. Hold on. I wonder... Hold on. I'm trying to, like, figure out. How I can use this. And if I can rotate the brush. I don't... No. Uh... Can I rotate this? Let's see. The... Hmm. No, I don't think I can. Because that, that's the one issue, is that you can't change. You have to literally do this in order for it to work, which is so stupid. Hold on a minute. There we go. There are some brushes that you can rotate. So there are brushes that you can do that with. That's why I was like, Really, it's really weird that I can't rotate these. The I can't. The only way that I can rotate it, it'll only go in the direction that I tell it to. This one only stays. This one also does the same thing. But if I try and at least get it to an area where I just do a bunch of different... That means whichever direction I draw in, it'll only follow that direction. So I can't just like manually change the rotation on it. Which isn't great. I will admit. And to anyone that has done like paintings and drawings before, like, yeah, it's cool that it can like, you know, follow where you paint because that's helpful in some circumstances. But it's also not in these certain cases. Where I literally need it to be able to do what I want it to do. And I literally have to like tap it. I can't just draw. I have to tap it. Some of these I can, you know, in the in over here. But there's like some areas that's like, hey, yo, look, a tree, a fucking tree, maybe. I want to have. I'm glad I took Claritin because now I feel better. My eyes aren't so watery anymore. Just begin with a corner of the brush and begin creating this illusion. This is what's so fantastic about having the black gesso on there. Automatically, this just happens because you have your dark color underneath already. You can do this on a white canvas, but you. Oh, you'd work yourself to death trying to get that, that much dark in there. See? And here, 
the black gesso puts that all in there for you. I will say my tree looks much more fuller than yours, Bob. Yeah, maybe back in here there's some things. They're a little darker. They had way back in here. Now on black canvas, the color shows up so much stronger than it does on, on a white canvas. So be careful that you don't get carried away. Oh, this gets this gets working so nicely. It even feels good. And next thing you know, you've covered up your whole canvas. There. And you want to retain some of these dark areas here. It makes it look deep and secretive and mysterious. Just all kinds of little little happy things are going on in there. But just think about form and shape and all the little limbs that live in there that create all these little I'm trying to see if there's like another thing I can. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm going to go back over it with the fan brush to just get those little, What's up? to get that, you know, those little leaves like this? Uh -huh. back in. And that, that I will say makes Most it pop out a little bit. Just don't throw it on at random. It won't look right and you'll be unhappy. You don't want this to work for you. Take a little knife here. We'll use some, we'll take a little Van Dyke Brown. We'll mix a little dark sienna with. And we need some land over on this side of the waterfall. See here? That'll help push that waterfall back. This is just brown, both browns. There. Uh, okay. Just let this give it crisp. Right exactly see that's the one thing with like digital is like you could smear or like do all this other stuff but sometimes you're gonna need to go back in there with the detail a little touch of titanium white mixed with those same brown colors same old brown color oh. he's uh he's doing some other stuff most most important just don't throw it on at random it won't look right and you'll be unhappy you don't want this to work for you Take a little knife here. We'll use some. We'll take a little Van Dyke Brown. We mix a little dark sienna with, and we need some land. Okay. So he took. He's moving on to making some land, and we do have. So he wants. Dark sienna, and Van Dyke Brown. And we actually do have the tool to. The knife, the knife tool. <clears throat> and over on this side of the waterfall. See here? That'll help push that waterfall back. This is just brown, both browns. There. My. This needs to be darker. Work right on down. Even if you can't see it, it's there. And it's there. God damn. Color on there. Maybe I maybe I need a little black in this. I should. Like not dark enough. Take the least little touch of titanium white mixed with those same brown colors. Same old brown colors. A little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna. Mix it to just a marbled appearance. Don't don't over mix it. And then start up here. And you can create the illusion of a little maybe there's a little cliff right here. A little little place where the bunny rabbit can run around and get a little drink. Hold on. Waterfall. Like. Of course, if he's not careful, he slips in there. Ooh, we're going to have rabbits stew. Now then, just basically a clean knife. Grab the edge of that and allow a little touch of that color, just a small little touch of that color to be pulled down. Just a very, very small amount. It'll create that illusion of big cliffs through in there. Maybe, maybe in our waterfall, maybe there's all kind of little grassy things that they're right up here on the top. Shoot, I tell you what, maybe some of our little grassy things start right in here. Just use the corner of the brush. Maybe there's all Hold on, I'm trying to like. And stuff that just sort of hang off there. If you have this much mist, chances are you're going to have a lot of, a lot of beautiful plants that just sort of hang off the edges of these and grow everywhere. Some over here, wherever, wherever. Just sort of think in your mind where you 
Will you believe all these little things would grow? There. Looks like I'm right on down. Here and there, we can have a little, a little brown. Maybe there's a little stone that lives there. There we go. Take a little touch of color. Just let it graze. Oh, most delicate touch. To give that rock some shape and form. Not much, though. Not much. Now then, you can come right back and just hang some of your little grassy areas right over it. Right over it. Maybe there's a few back here in the mist, but we can't see a lot of them because the mist is beginning to cover them. Hello. We are, we are trying to. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this Get little. This is like not this dark way. enough to me. About what's farthest away and work forward, forward, forward. Maybe there's another big And stone. again, the other thing is, is that it could be that we're just going to need to bring in a, a different brown. brush to help us just with this. Put, put a little highlight on that stone. Then we come back. Hang some grass right over the top of that. Let that disappear right back in there. Yeah, not easy. To pull it's down the dark. Quite an effective little area here. Scratch in a few little sticks and twigs. Let all those things happen. Maybe. Watch here. Watch here. I see something here. Yeah. Let's do it Sometimes it hole. just doesn't Finish. work. Because like, be? with him, you know, you can put a lot of paint on on the thing. But. Here, let's see. Not a paint. So, like, I can keep going back in here. And it's like... Like, it looks nice-ish. But at the same time, it's like, it doesn't hold down what you need a little bit sometimes. Because it just doesn't look right. It's all about the same amount each. Yeah, it's always about the same amount each time. Uh, you can change the amount of paint. So. Kind of smear it down with. Oh, my gosh. A posture check and a stretch. I'll, I'll do the stretch to help out. And then let me get the posture check going. <laughs> Make it come. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to redo some of these brushes, uh, or some of this green that I had in here. Of the fan. The health check, cherry adjustment. Yeah, the super cherry adjustment. I will say, I will say, the fifth, the the night, the eighties cold. They want their fucking chairs back. <laughs> like, I mean, it's still a pretty decently good office chair, but at the same time, hmm. 
Someone wants their chairs back. And now he's saying because of all the mist and things. There should be shit grill. Again, very hard to do. Is there any way I can do this with an interesting brush? Uh, I did not believe it. I'm a nerd and an idiot. <laughs> Oh my god, Warlock, that is the best fucking interrupt. If someone literally came up to me and fucking said, Hi, I'm this. I'm an idiot. I'd be like, holy, holy shit. What the hell? Okay. No. Uh... I wonder if I rotate that no, is no. oh no no not that not that kind of rotating this oh holy shit wrong Why is it that I decide to do harder paintings? Why do I why do I put myself through this? Why do I go, yeah, this could totally be a be a thing I could do. Cause this don't fucking look like how his fucking do. What did he do? Color. Just a small little touch of that color to be pulled down. Just a very, very small amount. It would create that illusion of big cliffs through in there. There. Now maybe, maybe in our waterfall, maybe there's all kind of little grassy things that live right up here on the top. Shoot, I tell you what, maybe some of our little grassy things start right in here. Just use the corner of the brush. Oh my god. It's coming. It a coming. Oh my god, they're coming. <laughs> Look at them. Oh, you know what? I fucking forgot to do. I know, I know. Undo, undo. have a little a little brown maybe there's a little stone that lives there there we go take a little touch of color just let it graze oh most delicate touch very very colorful on top of this to give that rock some shape and form not much though not much just woke up just hang some of your little grassy areas right over it. Right over it. Maybe there's a few uh, mist, but we can't see a lot of them. And seal yeah, I know. I've been sealed. I've been very sealed. 
to morning. Yeah, I know. Everyone say good morning to Jose. Talk about what's farthest away and work forward, forward, forward. And here's another big stone. Here's right down here. A little brown. You just take a little brown and white and see, just put put a little highlight on that stone. Then we come back. Hang some grass right over the top of that. Let that disappear right back in there. There. See, isn't that easy? We've got quite an effective little area here. Scratch in a few little sticks and twigs. Let all those things happen. Maybe, watch here. Watch here. I see something here. Let's do it this way. Take a little white on our brush. Decide where you think the water will be. Grab it and pull straight down. A little titanium white on the brush. I can change the angle of this. Right into this stone here. Just pull it down. But it's important that this comes straight down. There. Even if you turn your brush at that kind of angle, you still want to go straight down. There we are. Why does it say that I can change the angle of this and then it just not chain? See, it's picking up that color that's underneath. And all these things, these beautiful colors, will just happen automatically. Very lightly go across. Just enough to distort it a little bit. Maybe even back in here. Yeah, that's a fucking lie. There. See, isn't that easy? The literal know? brush yeah. says change angle, yeah. and then it doesn't change the angle. Tell you what, let's take a little Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna mixed together. Maybe there's a big cliff. Let's come right down in here. There's a big cliff that lives right in there. Just sort of make a decision. Maybe it comes to... Got to make those little noises, though. Just putting a little brown here and there on the canvas. So when we hit it with a little touch of, little touch of the brown and white, little highlight, it'll jump right out at you. Look at that. See, it fucking lies. I literally have to fucking do this. Are you very, fucking very kidding me? It just, it, it looks like there's more paint there than there really is. The reason it looks like it is because, once again, color stands out so strong against the black canvas. So strong. I'm going back to my brushes. Got a little grassy color there. Now, if our cliff lives right in here, let's just begin putting some of the little grassy things that live right here on our cliff. So yeah, no, the entire of this thing looks fucking awful. Just find the basic angle there. There we go. Sort of fill it in. But leave some of your little rocky areas there show through. Don't, don't kill them all. There we go. Now here's another little trick. See, if you want to push that waterfall back, let this come over it. Look at there. And instantly, instantly. It'll push that waterfall back into the painting. And now it's back in a it's in a secret little place back here. There we go. I'm gonna change up the entire of this fucking thing. Because the way that he's fucking doing it is actually kind of impossible to do. So you're gonna see what I'm gonna do in a second. Or what I'm trying to do. Isn't that fantastic? But these little these little grassy areas make it so nice maybe these come all the way down to the water maybe they even hang in the water a little bit that's all right too now sometimes it's nice to take and grab just a touch of those and pull them down into the water let them reflect just let them reflect that little touch there will really excite i'm gonna touch a little bit of phthalo blue here and there see the tiniest little bit just enough to hmm, make it stand out a little Beautiful. Now then, maybe, maybe there's a big tree that lives right there. So for that, we'll go back to the same lavender color that we covered. I'm just going to keep him way. going in the background. So maybe our big tree hangs over here. So all we're doing here is creating layers that each layer creates more depth in the painting. Makes it look deeper. And to me, that's what makes a painting interesting, that it has depth and distance. It's not just flat subject has dimension. There we go. Okay. Maybe that comes 
and then I'm done. Just sort of make a decision where you think this big old tree would live here and drop it in. That's all there is to it. Avras oh, ASMR, it yeah. Point, but it's there. It's there. We're going to take liner brush, a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, a little white, all those colors. Mix it with paint thinner so it's very thin, very thin, quite dark. We'll get a little dark sand in there too. There, that's better. Now then, we got a few little limbs that are showing through here. So keep these quite dark. We don't want them to get too light. If they do, they won't look exactly right. There. And when you when you're painting these, you might even think that they're not going to show, but they will. People will see them. They will see them. Of course, as we've mentioned before, I know nobody's interested in, in that happy buck. But if you should, uh, could listen to him chances. beating the devil out of that brush all day. Oh my god! But you can do it. People will love them. Absolutely love them. Now then, clean that old brush. Let's take back to my brush with the with the greens on it. I'm going to add some black. I want this to be a much darker green. Much darker. We'll tap a little color into the brush. Now let's go up in here and let's begin putting in some shapes there. See there? Now, once again, if you have trouble making your paint stick, add the least little touch of the paint thinner. Oh, least little touch though. Don't get crazy because very quickly it'll get too much and then you can't control it. It'll just run all over the place. And think about how these limbs would hang. Especially in this kind of area with all the with all that water there. These would probably be big old saggy trees. There. Sort of maybe sort of tropical type trees. Darker and darker back over in this area. Don't let them get too bright. There. Once again. I know you get tired of hearing it, but think about form here. Don't don't just hit it random. <laughs> Don't just hit it, random Bob. That's all I can fucking do. Protrude out this way. That's what, what these are hanging on. There. Sometimes maybe they hang over like that. However you want them. And when you start doing this, you'll see all kinds of things happening. Don't just try to copy. Don't just try to copy. You know, we're trying to teach you a technique here. So, do... Bob, oh, there is no technique when it comes to fucking digital. <laughs> there are no more techniques, Bob. You have to throw technique out the fucking window when you come to digital sometimes. Because they're like, oh yeah, you could totally do this in digital. And it's like, no, no you fucking can't. If you think you can, you're a fucking idiot. Because you do not understand the fundamental basics of how to fucking do digital. Because digital in itself has its own fucking basics that you have to you have to understand. And if you don't understand that, oh ho 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 ho, you're fucking dead. And I mean that seriously. If you if you don't understand like some of the basic fundamentals with how to do certain things in that of digital, you're never going to understand anything. Kind of pink. There he is. Hello. I mean plastic. And then the other thing comes in too, that sometimes the brushes that you use are going to be fucking shit. Because digital does not work the same as regular brushes do. I wish they did. 
because then you could get so many more interesting things that can happen with your stuff. But at the same time, You're not going to get anything. You'll see what I'm thinking with. Welcome to hard mode. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that tries to do Bob, any kind of paintings and tries to do them from like, um, and tries to go like trying to do like, uh, um, digital or like trying to do like raw, uh, all this, all these rock textures. Oh my God. Okay. I'm trying to also make it have shading to it a little bit with the with the moss here and there. This is supposed to be moss, okay? It's not great. Not great moss. I'm trying my best. we're gonna do the same that we did over here over there we're gonna try and pick similar colors the hell this one might only if i do this oh let's say it's growing on me oh my god <laughs> yeah this this moss do be growing don't it what the hell? I'm still going to make it look like there's an indication of where areas are going to be because what I'm going to do... I'm going to go back. And start putting in some highlighted areas. Uh, where's my, where is that thing? No. Okay. And now I can redo it back. 
and start getting some of them. Oh well, and start getting that other. Uh, a home with the pies I made, a double batch of- <gasps> Ooh! Chocolate fudge? Chocolate fudge might do this? That looks- that sounds amazing. Yeah, chocolate fudge is not that difficult to make. Uh, I actually do have some stuff to make some chocolate fudge, probably, uh, at some point. Um, but anyways, uh, I am going to go back and take this that we have because, actually, it has... Holy shit. It doesn't matter how much fucking pain it has. Apparently it doesn't like painting. I need this to be bluer. I'm going to actually add a little bit of actual blue in kind of, oh, and then, um, ah, now you can see. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, you know what I'm going to do? Right? I need this to be no smaller. Would this be better? Yes. Is this all I can do? Yes. I 
can add a little. Oh, a nice, nice area. I will say though, what we're gonna do is take a this green, go back over the areas that should be, you know, a little darker in certain. Give some depth. Yeah, that's what it was missing. It was it had too many uh had too many highlights. It didn't have enough shadow. Oh, look at that. American egg. Playing Bob now. Come out much better than this one. But don't just try to copy. There. I'm not copying you, Bob. Tracing thing. Start out with patterns here. Because it's 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 more than an individual thing. If you do your own thing, we each see nature through different eyes. We each have our own idea of how things should look. And the way I think things should look may not necessarily be the way you think things should look. So let your imagination take you where you want to go. Don't just depend on somebody else to take you there, because you can do it. Maybe there's a little bank here so we can stand on and look out here. Let's just drop in. There's even some of that lavender color. And we'll just put us in a happy little bank right there. I just put the dark in there just to form an edge so we have dark in there underneath this. And we can come back and we can create all kinds of little things. There. Shoot. Now if you want to show depth under these, leave a little dark area underneath those bushes. Because that's where the little the little creature would hide. There you want. There you want. Maybe there's a little stone in those right there. So a little brown. Take a little brown and white. It just create us a just a happy little stone that lives out here. He watches all this water play and fall. There. Something like so. There we are. Now then. Let's take. I'm still using a little small knife. I like it. I'm gonna take the least little bit of color on the knife. Almost none. Very firmly. Just scrape in some little things here and there. Just to bring that together, clean up those edges around the stones and everything. There. Not a great deal, though. A little bit out in here. See there? Look at that little bit of blue that's right there. Doesn't that shine, though? See, when you do this, use it sparingly. Use it sparingly. That's what makes it so impressive, is that there's such a small amount of it there. If you had a lot, it would lose its effect. 
That's a little, that's a little treasure. Hang on to it. <laughs> there we are. Just a few little, little ripples here and there. And take the liner brush, a little bit of the brown and the white. There we go. Maybe, maybe here and there we can pick out a little stick that lives in there. A few little things that hang over wherever you think they should be. You see these sticking out when you're looking at the woods and stuff. Put them wherever you think they should be. I think we're about ready to sign that one. Looks finished. Take a little and thinner, a little bit of the bright red. Let's sign it right down here. Little oh, area. Lucky I have a very short vein, so it only takes a second. There we are. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a little bit different. It'll give you some experience with a black gesso and you can do a fantastic painting to make you feel good in here. From all of us here, I'd love to wish you happy painting. God bless my family. And there, there you go. It's a very, very, very green painting. Okay, let me just exit out of that one because we're going to be doing another one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it a waterfall with some stuff. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, where's the detail? There it is. Uh. Oh, shit. I always try to do the signature on a different layer just because it's better. <laughs> at first, I thought you were calling my painting 10 out of 10, but no, then I looked at you doing the sling. I have 10. Hey, at least it's a nine. I'll take a nine. I'll take a nine. Uh, hold on. Let me save it. Hold on. Takes a second for it to save out. Because I, I try and at Please post them up uh, on my uh, on my Twitter, and if I don't post the pictures up on my Twitter, I probably post them up on my Instagram. Um, so, if you ever wonder where some of these paintings go, they do end up showing up on my Instagram. Um, so, yeah, this one looks weird. Um, let me just say it's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to look very, very dark, but it is very hard to blend all of these colors together. And I'm and I mean that. Like it is yeah, let me exit out of here because I already did it. So I have to like blend the shit out of this. Because it's supposed to look basically almost, it's supposed to look almost black. Um,
Okay, I think... I think we've blended it almost enough to where it could work. Uh, if you're wondering about what the white line is, uh, that is our horizon line because I was looking through stuff and I was like, ooh, this looks cool to do. Let's try this one. Will I will admit there are some that I look at and I'm like, I can pull that off, and then I probably won't pull it off. But anyways, we are doing a um, so it's called Crimson Tide. But what it is is it is a uh, it is a sunset scene on a beach. It is a beach sunset oh, scene. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the. A little bit of the titanium white on it. Don't need a great deal. And you could do this with a fan brush or two-inch brush, whatever. I just, I like this little brush. Decide where your light source is going to be here. And we'll just begin bouncing in a little color. Just a little white. And it'll pick up those colors that are already on the canvas. And automatically, automatically, you don't even have to worry about it or think about it. This will begin happening. And just sort of think about little cloud shapes and formations and Work up with Sorry, you. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So your brightest color is down here. And this is a fantastic little painting. Uh, to do I'm going to clear this, this though, because you don't, don't need all this. Black canvas. And all they'll do is, they'll just see you add white paint to your brush and then touch the canvas. And it's like, it's like magic happens. <laughs> we have instructors that travel all over the country doing demonstrations. So I think I have a better brush that we could do this with. Because, again, sometimes things don't translate well. Um, we're going to take a, a different brush. Mm. I thought I had a different brush out I'm gonna make it bigger. Now, the one problem is, is that these are supposed to be blend blending together. Um, but the issue is that these don't blend. That's the main problem with some of this stuff, is that there are certain brushes that you can blend with, and there are certain brushes that you can't blend with. Like, even though that this is working, which is fucking fantastic that this is actually fucking working to somewhat of an extent. Uh, I wish I could show you what, like, Bob is seeing, um, or, like, what he's doing, uh, but I just don't want to get hit with any copyright stuff, so that's why I never show, uh, what, what Bob is doing. Um, but basically what he is doing is what I'm doing. Oh my goodness. It is like, I can, I, and I'm trying to go like very soft, subtle. I probably won't need to, holy shit. Some of this is not being registered at all. Uh, maybe I won't need to, to blend some of this stuff together.
don't think you're going to get copyright for an old episode of Bob. Uh, no, 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 because uh, they they could they um because sometimes if you're not part of the family or something like that or. The family could say, like, something, and then I would get in trouble, and I'd rather not. Yeah, it's the last thing. I am surprised that this fucking worked. Hold on, I'm gonna highlight some. This, this fucking worked. How did this fucking work somehow? It's not great cuz how you're supposed how it's supposed to do this is that it's supposed to turn colors cuz like you're looking at an it, it looks better cuz they're supposed to have an all black canvas and then all of a sudden just color appears but you can kind of see that there is color um I think it might look better on a different screen but yeah you're you and, and this is supposed to be like clouds you know like a very cloudy, cloudy day. And uh, if you want to know what I painted it with, I went in with crimson and uh, the the uh, the top crimson and phalo blue, and you're supposed to fade it out into the respective places. I could have done a gradient and then blended that, uh, but hmm, it's much easier to just blend it by hand especially when you're trying to do more like representative of traditional work um so they'll do demonstrations it shows up so much stronger on this black canvas than it does on the white canvas it's almost unreal now then a good dry two inch brush be sure it's dry if it's wet and you touch this beat the devil out of it too now this time I'm hold on for friends Going back a little. Person gets the gets the painting. There we go. But here, we're, all we're doing is just thinking of some basic little shapes that we're. Oh my gosh. For and just doing little circles, just sort of winding it. Up. <laughs> just winding it up, just mixing it. This you want me to beat the devil? You know what? I should. I I will have. I will have. Uh, when I do. <laughs> If I'm doing regular art stuff, maybe what I'll do is I'll have a redeem for beat the devil out of it, and then I have to I have to grab a brush and I have to beat the devil out of the brush. Beat the devil out of it too. Now this time I'm going to add the least little touch of cad yellow, maybe even a little yellow ochre, right to my white. A little tiny bit. So he's taking like basically the yellows. And then a little bit of white. Add color out. Just a little. Not much. Not much. It's easy to overdo. Not much. Color shows up so much stronger. And then. On this black canvas than it does on the white canvas. It's almost unreal. Now then. A good dry two inch brush. Be sure it's dry. If it's wet and you touch this, you're going to be an agony city. We don't want that. Using just the corner of the brush. And just sort of wind it up, making little, little tiny circles, little tiny circles. There we go. Oh my gosh. There we go. Uh, oh, you accepted the duel. And the more you blend uh, this, the softer it'll become. Steal yourself, warrior. You have to decide when it's blended to the degree that you want. There. And when it is, then you stop, and it's just exactly right. And you can use any color here. I just decided today to use the crimson and the phthalo blue. But you can use any color that your heart desires. Any color. And it makes some of the most gorgeous things you've ever seen. Try this. Even if you've never done a sunset, this one will work so well for you. So well. And you don't want to blend all these little patterns and stuff out. You can just blend it till it's too smooth. I like some of those little rough things in there. It looks like a little little floater clouds that just sort of sneak around in there and just play. Little wind blown things that are back in the sky. They just sort of make it nice. There we go. And the more you blend it, once again, the more it'll pick up that color, the darker it'll become. The color it picks up, I mean, is the color that's already on the canvas. Uh. All right. So 
good harm exercise. <laughs> really good harm exercise. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I like how we're asking about how our footwork is here. You can add in little, little tiny, individual type things. Let's keep this one quite simple. I don't want to get too carried away here, but this is also an excellent sky for just doing landscapes with. You don't have to do seascapes only with it. You can do anything with it. And you can't believe some of the paintings that people are doing. In fact, I tell you what. Let me let me show you some of the paintings. I'm just going to drop in a little. Hold on. Let me. Like this. But I will you? show this. Hold on. So these are some, he's showing some of the paintings that people have done. And like, God, God damn. Like, look at, look at some of these paintings. Uh, wait, who won? Who won? Uh, oh, you won the duel. Nice. Uh. You have best me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait. Okay. You know what? In my in my in my in my stream, you know what we should do is I'm gonna see if we can if we can change that chat message to say, uh, I am Nico Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I, I I'm such a fucking nerd. I feel like anyone that comes in my chat and just goes like, what the? <laughs> it's like wait. But instead of the I uh, am Anigo Montoya, it would just say I at and your name. You killed my father. <laughs> Prepare to die. <laughs> I feel like that. Oh, did, did you guys know that Disney is remaking The Princess Bride? I'm so upset. <laughs> you don't need to change something that's already so perfect. And a lot of these people have never had any lesson other than the television show you shouldn't need to change something that's already so beautiful in its own self but of course disney wants to make all that money so people too they're not all older people like me a lot of them are very young people that have basically had no art lessons other than the television show that's yeah just from watching the series it is oh <gasps> but i will say i will say one thing i am excited that disney is doing i am excited that Disney is doing, um, because this is just the oh my gosh, there's so many people streaming today. I'm really happy that they are making a sequel series to Willow. Oh my god. <laughs> I just saw the tweet, the tweet you sent me, Jose. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Because it carries over into every part of your life. You learn that you can do anything. And I don't know what. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this much. Before Lord of the Rings came out, there was a movie called Willow, and it's really good. It feels like a D and D campaign where shit does go wrong. But at the same time, a lot of shit goes right. Like, it's a good campaign. Like, you know, like a good D&D &D campaign. And um, what made, I will say, what made this movie notable is that Willow, uh, so it's a care. so the entire story revolves around this guy named Willow. But let me preface this. All of this uh, Willow has dwar uh, the actor has dwarfism so he you know i'm not gonna say he is a dwarf he just has dwarfism um if you don't know what dwarfism is it's i don't look it up please i don't want i don't know how or what they call themselves uh i don't need a summary okay well Willow is very good. If you have Disney Plus, look up Willow. It's really good if you love Lord of the Rings and all of that sort of stuff. It's really, it's really good. And I'm glad that they're making like a, a sequel series to it. So it happens like years after 
and it's it's good it's good need to rewatch a little remember a thing from it yeah i need to go and rewatch it as well um but that is coming out it comes out on f monday maybe after stream i'll go i'll go and watch it that's what i'll plan to do mike what what do you mean mike what 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 get it i don't get it what do you mean mike is echoey like if you're far oh my god this fucking thing here does that sound better Well, be at mind that I had I was like down here and it was bouncing off of something, which was my tablet. I swear to God, if it is the other one, I'm going to shit my pants. No, no, nope. it's just being weird. Okay, fine then. You get no mic. I am trying to fix things on the mic because the pop filter is being weird. Hold on. I'm trying to like, I will say this pop filter thing is like shit. I have to fix it every single time that I fucking move in. There we go. Okay, that should be better. Wolf, 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 barky barks. I bet it's on your end because no one has complained about it being echoey. You don't understand that if something is echoey that it usually is because it's there's two sounds overlaid on top of each other. But it can't be my error, because I know, because I fix things. And I always sometimes check back through my VODs just to make sure that they don't sound weird. And uh, the only thing I change ever is usually the noise gate, and that's it. And the noise gate can't make it echoey. So... Just to sort of take out some of the little brush strokes and, and take a look-see, maybe... If you want to sparkle one, you can just take a little paint on the corner of the brush and maybe put a little sparkle up in there. Take very tight little circular strokes. Very tight. Mm. But isn't that a very simple and easy way to make a striking, striking sky? And I think that's about all we need for a little sunset sky. Now you could go back and you could put in clouds. You can do all kinds of little things. Just sort of let your imagination take you where you want to go. But there. Well, how how do start, I sound now? Once you start doing this, don't don't just stop there. Keep going with it. All I want to show you is an idea to get you started and to get you to get you fired up and then turn you loose on the world. Because once you learn this, then you can do anything. Really? Tape off. And that's just plain old ordinary masking tape. But now we have So who was your end? Horizon. And I saved a little bit of that yep. crimson for the liquid and liquid clear mixture. Just took a little liquid clear and put with some crimson so I could fill this in right here. 
because naturally there was nothing. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna blame that it was your end. So we'll just fill that in, bring it right up to the horizon. That easy. Oh, guys, because it's a. Uh... We can start playing. Nah. What do you mean, nah? <laughs> Fight me. One more time. Let me just take a little fan brush. <laughs> a little, little white on it. And when I'm doing seascapes, I sort of like to lay out my major wave and have an idea where it goes because everything else is secondary to that. So just use a fan brush or filter, any old thing. Decide where your major wave is going to live. Maybe here, it's going to be here and crash over. Like that. And then the waves back here will just sort of correspond with that, however you want them. So the eye or the transparency will be right in here, right in that area. Okay, maybe that'll help. Yeah, hold on. It's going to crash over right there. And the rest of it's very easy. Once you determine where that wave is going to live. Now then, let's just take a little titanium. When I'm using a number three fan brush, but you could use whatever you have. I'm going to start right back here under the lightest area and just start making little little wave things. Let me exaggerate. I'm doing like that. And I'm really exaggerating. And that way... Oh my gosh, it's so... Okay, wave this wave movement wave is wave really hard to do. Pencil. The, the pen. Another stretch. It so, so it's got a little wiggle in it. Little... Uh, I need a dice bag, so I'm taking... A break. We'll go back Trying to crochet room. one. Hey, yo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still got to make me my I thing. See. Hold on. I'm going to pause here. Okay. Did I make the amount of paint less? Holy shit. Well, um, we got a problem. They ain't blending right. Because, like, his... See, this is the issue with digital. It don't blend unless you go back over and fucking blend that shit. So he's, like, out here making some smooth-ass fucking waves. Meanwhile, here I am with my my fucking. See, this is this is the issue with fucking anything to do with digital ever is this is the is, is the blending because it don't blend I bet. I bet you are very stupid. Uh. 
And now to smooth this, I'm literally going back in with a blend brush. And doing it in the same same uh, direction. And then what I can do is then when I zoom out, I know it doesn't look right, and it's not ever going to, just because it don't work like that. How this is isn't going to work the way that you would think it would in digital because the issue is if the brush is not programmed to blend it will not blend so you are just stuck with a white lines everywhere because they don't blend and even if you put less amount of paint it's still not going to do it. And the other thing is too, is that this brush doesn't work well when you're trying to double back. Oh, I could make the brush bigger, but then you end up with that. And he's this is a very a little detail to that and the sound of a gun just sort of correspond to the key looking characters way back in the back don't just go straight across make it so so it's got a little wiggle in it a little there see and then if we get further along the painting we'll go back and add a little detail to that and the sound of a gun instant waves yeah see it's just it's not working because it's not fucking blending that you can do without any problems because he's like i can just do this and this and then it will just go but you're also gliding the paint along it and that doesn't work with digital at all so you have to do it all all the blending that would easily be done by just pulling the paint across is not going to work so you're going to have to go in by hand and literally do all of that by hand so you can still do like so he does like a wiggle like this but you can't really do that in all. You're just gonna have to just not be that. Also, I just realized I fucked up on the drawing. And no, uh, if I fucked up that badly, uh, I am never coming back from that. Uh, let, let's, if there is a way, make it like that. See again, it's the it's the trying to do the double back and it's not pulling is the issue. And how his waves look is like here, let's get a different brush to show you. See the portrait seems to do way better.
an ink for this. But it is very hard to or at least try and find a way to have it look fucked up. Because again, it's it's the issue the the C drawing, the issue with it mainly is trying to find a brush that is flat on one side and blends on the other. But this one doing. See, this one doesn't do it because it's only going to do this. When you pull it like this, it does that, but it's not really going to give me what I want. I and even if I were to... Yeah, it's not going to do it. Because you have to do this. Over and over. But his brush is so big. Because his brush is about, no, it's getting bigger. His brush is like about this big. But then the other issue, again, the fucking blending. I don't think I'll be able to fucking make it work. Because what it needs is the blend. That's what it needs. The fuck? Brushing. Uh, okay, I, I readjusted it. I somehow got it. This is the other thing with the digital. I don't know how the fuck he's like how he is drawing these because he's like does he like just not pick up his fucking pen? So or like his fucking shit, cause I can't draw these without not. There, see? And then if we get farther along the painting, we'll go back and add. A what is the what is the angle that he's fucking doing? Whatever you have. Then we'll start right back here under the lightest area, and just start making little little wave things. Let me exaggerate. I'm doing like that, and I'm really exaggerating, and that way you get these little wave looking characters. Yeah. He's really like. In the back. <laughs> Don't just go straight so let me answer. he's trying to do this and trying to do this and then you go back but the thing about it is the paint sometimes don't want to do that as i say this is a very easy nice simple little seascape and the lighter i get the more thinner it gets which is not what I want, because it needs to be. Just wipe it on a paper towel, and I'm going to take this light color and blend it back. Just blend it back. There we go. So blend it, blend. But once again. But where the lighter I go.
is too much. Okay, try to retain a dark period. The, qu the question is, what is he fucking doing? Because I, I literally cannot understand what the fuck he's doing. I see that he's painting with the brush. I see that. But I have no fucking idea what he's doing. Because the thing is, is that you need the paint and you need the brush. And then it works. And it just works. But digital is not... The technique he's doing is literally stuff layered on top of each other. And if you don't do the blending, you have to do the blending by fucking hand. That is the only way that you can get this to work. But again, you need the color to be picked up. That's why you do the before painting brushing. So you, this color, this thing picks up, picks it up. It'll pick up that, that color. Actually, no, it's this one. This, this picks up the below color. But as you can see, the other stuff doesn't because it is not coded to be a blending brush. Regular brushes, you can blend. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna do this. This is the hard part about doing C's like this. This is why most digital artists stay completely away from C's. Because doing ocean and water in digital, there is a way to do water in digital that's really super easy and that works with 2D really easily as well. But um, if you're trying to do realistic water, uh, there's a reason digital artists stay away from it or if they do use it they usually just take a a picture of realistic water and then overlay it on top and then just do some slight brushing and that's it so yeah they do photo bash it because it's easier than actually doing it because in digital water just doesn't work right unless you have like a water brush like a brush that paints like water but like the little like lake scenes and stuff like that, those are pretty easy because it's still water. But moving water, like sea water, uh, is vastly different than that of crystal clear lake water. Because all you gotta do is just put some blue coloring in it, like you saw with my with the with the with the waterfall. Like that stuff is easy. Doing that is easy in digital because it has to be opaque with a little bit of blending. But this one, you need to have blending. And if you don't have blending with it, it just doesn't work right. And trying to find the right brush that does it good is the issue. And it's trying to find a brush that does what you need to do. Because see, this brush is just a transparent brush. It's not opaque. But I can make it opaque by going over with layers. But that means that all the pixels underneath this are changing to this color. It is not mixing with the color underneath. It is ju just transparent. Whereas a actual blending brush mixes the colors together. That's what traditional work always does, is blends all the colors together. So you have one layer and it blends all together. That doesn't work with digital. And trying to find the right brush that does it is very, very hard. Like, dumb question, can put down the color a bit and blend? you can you can do that but the issue is is that it will not look right 
So I can do I can do this. Right. This one is blending. But it just looks a little weird. I'm trying to still keep the wiggle in it, but it is very, very hard. And then the other thing is that you're supposed to pull this. And yeah, you can go back over it with doing this to make it a little smooth and then keep the roughness in some places. I'm actually going to let me get some of And I'm actually going to do oh, some wiggles. There. <laughs> kind of work yeah it it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't work very well because again doing this that is somewhat blending with the color underneath actually which is very nice it's very nice that it it's doing that or it could be yeah so it is blending with the color underneath if I put more white than whatever. So these brushes are coated, like the, the Bob Ross brushes basically that I have um, are coated to be blending and also drawing brushes. But not all of these brushes do that. So you have to be careful with what you use or else you will end up with just a bunch of white lines. And I'm not even joking. That's what you'll end up with. There. And we'll wipe all the excess paint off that brush. Just wipe it on a paper towel. And I'm going to take this light color and blend it back. Just blend it back. There we go. That's nice blended flow. But once again, we're making an angle stroke like that. to it but try to retain a dark area right along this line here right along there and it'll all make sense here in just a second I know sometimes it looks a little little strange when you start a seascape like this but of all the seascapes I've painted this is probably the easiest simplest method that I have found to paint a very effective seascape and I'm also trying to keep the blend, you could paint one that just has the blending, uh, when I do the blending, try to keep it in the same sort of wiggly, wiggly like this. Quite, quite easy. But at the same time, it's, again, really fucking difficult. Not right now, grab a little filbert here. We said the eye of the wave was going to be right there. So I'm going to take a little titanium white put the least little bit least little bit 
a cad yellow into it. Not this is really the oh my god, no, shit the fuck in whole home high resolution water use. Yeah, I think it's very important to take that information, liberate it, and put it in the palm. There you go. Not much cad yellow. Load the bristles full of color. Let's go up in here. If this is going to be the transparency or the eye, go right in here and start scrubbing some color in. Just scrub it Thanks. hard. You want to push it right into the <laughs> Can I really not like go this right one? The fabric, and then we'll work outward. Because a little light's going to play right along that wave there. Here. there. Take this. And just sort of blend that in like that. And that'll give us an idea of where a transparency That's like no be. opacity. Okay, let me go back to our little, for some reason I keep picking up the number three foam brush and it works just as well. Maybe it works better, who knows. Whatever, whatever works better. Let's make the top of the wave, here it comes. See, just crash over, gotta make those little noises over. Okay, this isn't. Just think about water crashing right over there. There it comes, right Heck. over the top. Ding. Just a little bit, just so it separates it from the background a little better. Oh, that's nicer. That's nicer. I like that. See? And that's basically all we need. And let's see. Let me grab another fan brush here. I have several of them going. Let's take a little of our pretty little blue, a little crimson. Make a little Sorry, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding me? I think I fucked up the brush. I'm not even joking, I actually think I fucked up this brush. Because I'm trying- what I'm trying to do... Because it's doing that. Yes. There we go. I returned it to its default settings. Oh my god. I'm gonna kill something. Crash over, gotta make those little noises over. Just think about what he's like, make little noises. Chew. There it comes, right over the top. Ding. And add a little touch of that cad yellow to it. Just a little bit. Just so it separates it from the background a little better. Oh, that's nicer. That's nicer. I like that. See? And that's basically all we need. Uh, let's see, let me grab another fan brush here. I have several of them going. Let's take a little of our pretty little blue, a little crimson. Make a little lavender type color. Maybe even a little black in there. There we go. Hold on. Grab a little touch of the white. That'll make a nice shadow color. Nice shadow color for our foam here. Let me go back up in here. Decide where your foam is going to live. And we can just begin scrubbing in here just using the corner of the fan brush or you can use a filbert filbert might even work a little better depends on what you like just try them both and see which one works the best for you after a while after you've painted for a little while in this technique you become so comfortable with it you can literally just about pick up any brush and do anything <laughs> there i'm going back to my little filbert we'll put a little more of that white with uh... the into it Wow, um, this ain't fucking working. Literally just about pick up any brush and do anything. That's nicer. I like that. See? And that's basically... He mixes, like, nice. a little bit of color to be a shadow color. But the issue is... <laughs> the brush that I have don't worky workies with that. A little crimson. Like a little lavender type color. Maybe even a little black in there. There we go. Grab a little touch of the white. That'll make a nice shadow color. Nice shadow color for our foam here. Let me go back up in here. Decide where your foam is going to live. 
So we can just begin scrubbing in here, just using the corner of the fan brush. Or you could use a filbert. Filbert might even work a little better. Depends on what you like. Just try them both and see which one works the best for you. After a while, after you've painted for a little while in this technique. Oh my God, I have to change the angle. Pick up any brush and do anything. Angles <laughs> don't work. Oh my God. Let's put a little more of that white with. Oh, I have to turn it. Maybe, maybe, maybe right in here. Push upward. And let's put a little foam splash. Oh, fantastic. That doesn't work either. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that turning it does not make it work? It's just going to. Oh, are you kidding me? Color on there. There. Um. Bring it right on up. Something like that. Now then, you can use a one inch brush. Take just the corner of it and very gently blend that till it's just as soft as silk. Getting just somewhere. Very gently. Till it's just very, very soft in there. Now. Is there an easier way to just Good clean dry brush. And back back to this transparency that we were working on. We have an idea where it's at. It's right in here. We have our white with a little bit of a little bit of cad yellow in it. We can take the corner of the brush. I'm using a two inch, but you can use whatever. Like zoom out, please. Because I don't know where any of my fucking colors are anymore. Will not believe how smooth it'll become. Just blend it. we can begin thinking about the shape of our wave there. yeah uh, shape of the wave yeah shape of the shape of my fucking ass Bob because see this is this is the issue with like with this with this particular brush and it's the fucking fan brush the fan brush if you try and paint like if you paint like this it's fine but once you start trying to like do this, you'll see it does some this this brush does some weird artifacting. There we are. Because because of it. Little, little foam patterns that are living back here. And at home when you have a lot of time, you can yeah. go in here and this I'm gonna actually stop because I don't think it got something yeah like because he's using the fan brush but the problem is is that you should have the ability to change the angle of the fan brush well digital you don't have that option See, this is this is why I kind of wanted to do this series to show that there are some techniques that are just absolutely completely impossible to do on digital and this is one of those techniques this is completely a hundred percent impossible you're gonna have to figure out an entire new way of doing this so if you have pain digital like traditionally all your life and then you like i want to move on to digital this is why some people don't even move on into digital work because you have to relearn so many things because how you did it usually is not going to work on a tradition on a digital platform and this is one of them because they're you know they think like oh well maybe it can register like the angle of the way of how i'm holding my pen no it's only one angle if you're going to want to change it you're going to have to go in there and you're going to have to do it yourself so you have to literally change the angle <clears throat> of the brush to be different <laughs> and sometimes even when you think that you've changed the angle of the brush <coughs> you haven't changed it sometimes you can think you changed it and you'll realize that you actually never changed the angle of the brush in general and then when he did it, he took a dry brush, kind of 
it out a little. And I can tell when he used to dry brush. So cool. And you can blend as you will not believe how smooth it'll become. Yeah, he's taking a dry brush and smoothing. Now we can begin thinking about the shape of our wave. Get down, grab that, and begin pulling it a little bit. All right. Time to make some time to make some big decisions here. Let me find my liner brush. I'm gonna go into a little that white paint thinner. This is the white that had a little bit of yellow in it. And let's just let's just put a little highlight right up here on top of those. Just a little highlight. There it comes. Put a little splashing up here. There. And back in here. Mm -hmm. There we are. All right. All kinds of little, little foam patterns that are living back here. And at home, when you have a lot of time, you can just go in here and put all kinds of little details. Yell at me here if I go over 30 minutes, so you have to hurry a little. No sense of humor. Don't understand that. I'd like to have hour shows. I could show you a lot more. There. All right. But see how that makes that little bit back here just pop right out at you? That easy. Seascapes really don't have to be hard, and you don't just have to do the little simple looking ones that we see so often. There, maybe up uh -huh. down. This is where you begin forming all the little things that are happening in here. Now, a little bit darker color. We'll put a line right under here. That line will separate it from the eye. makes it jump out and back in here a few little few little things that you can see through the wave through the transparency making like the dark color let's get crazy what the heck what the heck maybe maybe well, i just had another idea let's have that crashing against something i'm gonna go into my van dyke brown and he's taking dark sienna, just mix them up on the brush all through this very dark and colors here. You can like Let's have a great big okay. stone that lives out here in the water. Maybe this is off the coast of California or Oregon or somewhere. So just take the paintbrush. Just like a thinner brush. Make the stone to live and come right up in here. Touch. And let's just make a basic. Maybe this is one of them big beautiful rocks that lives out in the water. Something like so. Just let it go. Wherever. And the old fan brush is good for forming rocks like this. Maybe it's got a little point out here. Who knows? Got to have a place for the sea. Well, it stuff. somewhat looks like a wave, at least. Yeah, I know. I like seagulls, too. What the heck? Like any kind of old bird or critter. They're all very special. There, let me put a little projection out here. That maybe it ooh, almost covered up all my... Little foam, but that's all right. We know it's back there. We know it's back there. No big deal. Then he took a bunch of paint down in here too, and maybe we'll have a little. Maybe we'll have a little beach down here. So we put a little brown. So we put white on there, and we'll have. We'll have some sand. Yeah, and while I have that, I'm just gonna reach up here and grab a little of the white. I need dark, dark sand onto it. But it's the same old dirty brush. Give me the darkness. And a little highlight on top of the stone. I don't want much because this this is almost a silhouette. It would almost be a silhouette. If you have a sunset, there would not be a lot of color up here. And just by changing strokes, you can make this look rough and jagged and can actually almost like you're forming a rock. Just by changing some of the strokes. Make all kinds of little projections and stuff. See how this needs to be like super darker. 
It looks like Seagull's been living up there for a long time. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Maybe, shoot, who knows? Maybe there's another big old rock right here in the southern front. And you can just form it. Just decide what shape it is. And just begin forming the basic indication. Once again, don't let this get too bright on you. Yeah, like don't be too distinct of a rock. Because as dark as this is, Wait, I'm doing the set. wrong fucking brush. Are you fucking kidding me? And it'll lose that illusion. There. Shoot. And a lot of it. Oh my god, it's not gonna Are you kidding me? What do you mean you're not gonna work like that? You were working like that earlier. Oh my god, it's not gonna work. Are you freaking kidding me? Uh Maybe a little tree grew up there. Maybe a little scraggledy. Is that a word? Scraggledy? Maybe a little scraggledy evergreen track. You don't wanna know how we fucking made this rock. Notice that most of the most of the limbs here I'm putting on one side because sometimes around that area the wind blows so hard that limbs only grow on one side of the tree. Yeah, that's true. The ugly little things sometimes, but <laughs> but they only have limbs and branches growing. I would rather side. die than make this and fucking this rock again. I'm yes. gonna be honest. I'm so gonna be fucking honest. See it. But that really is the way they look. And I wish I was born Come on. You know what? Fuck it. Thing. I'm coloring it. And Just coloring it in. I couldn't believe how funny some of the little trees were. But they're beautiful. Fuck the mm. shit we're trying to do with this. I'm gonna take white. Let me get a little touch of that phthalo blue. That's so pretty. Another touch. He's like adding all these cool little stuff and yeah. things. I'm gonna wipe the old knife off. Now I'm gonna take and pick up a small roll of paint right on the edge of the knife there. Little knife. Got the little knife. And you have to make a big decision here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Push very hard. Put it on with a knife, something like so. Then take, let me wipe this fan brush off and get the excess paint off of it. Yeah, better wash it. You really need a clean fan brush. It's good and dry. And grab that. There, see? And sort of pull it to shape and form your waves. Just like so. easy way of making a little wave and I'll show you I'll show you something else here watch here watch here sometimes you want reflections in your water this water is very thin it's almost on the beach so, so just well I know what he's doing like he's taking he's pulling down and going this a white put a little right there too go across it'll create that shine like you get when water is reflecting now then Take our small knife, a little bit of that, more of that blue and white, come right up under that rock. And he is... Maybe there's another happy little little ripple. No. Right I have to literally bring the blend out. Bend. Make it bend. And then, back to our little fan brush, grab this, and it needs to be straight, because this is very flat here. See? And just pull this back. Isn't that the easiest way you've ever seen to make a knife? All you gotta do is just pull it back. Shoot, who knows? I'll tell you what. One more for practice. One more for practice. There's one right here. Really, really push hard though. So you get that little ridge of paint there. This is what you'd call the little ridge. Maybe there's some little doors that come out in here. This uh, is really getting shallow. Can in I here. Really getting shallow. Once again, and pull it back. That's just one of the nicest.
fix this little wave I'm making there. And back to our little liner brush. Fill it up blue and white with paint thinner on it. Make it very thin. And we can come in here and just begin adding all kinds of little little details. And the more and then you put in, the better your painting will look. Just drop some of these little doers in. Right like box here. I guess a brush. See that? That easy though. You can make all kinds of little things. You could take you could take and just put a little rock here and there. Use a filbert brush. Dark on one side, a little light on the other. And just so they'll pop in a little rock or two. Something like that. Take our liner brush with that thin blue and just clean up the edges. And that easy. You got some little rocks laying up here on the beach. Yeah, no, fuck that. This, We're going to just do with nice, this. Easiest, simplest little seascapes that you've ever tried. You'll like it. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. He's trying to make it reflective. And because one thing about sometimes using the blending brushes is that they don't work the way that you think that they should. That's the end of it. Oh. And he's taking actually a little bit of the white, a little bit of the So he's trying to make it look like a sandy area. I mean, it does look like water. Then I'm going to take this detail brush. I'm going to use this color. And we're going to make it as tiny as possible. And have the least amount of paint. Oh, not the knife. And eh, maybe the knife would work better.
I'm so fucking done with this thing. <laughs> I've been streaming for three hours. I thought that this was only going to take me two. And it has been three. I hate it here. But hey, looks like water. <laughs> That's the important thing, right? <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> oh my god. But hey, we did it. We did two. We did two. Yeah. I feel like this will be better if I do it on actual canvas, but oh, we suffered through that one. We suffered through that one. Wait, what the hell? Oh, now now it registers. Oh, my eye, my eye twitching. <laughs> my eye twitches. The bottom of my eye twitches. Oh my god. Anyways, let's uh Oh you're trying to trying to jump to catch the star. Oh I'm so tired. I'm so tired. But uh But then I can look for, uh, you know. Let let me go see who's streaming right now. It's like I'm so I'm so fucking done. I'm so fucking done. I'm so fucking tired. I'm so tired. I'm so done. Let's let's see let's see who we can raid. <laughs> okay, there's a there's a good amount of. Oh. <gasps> Okay, I think I I think I know who. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> we're going to raid somebody I haven't raided raided in a while and I think their debut is going to be coming up soon. Oh yeah, their debut is going to uh their uh actual debuting is going to be December 2nd. So uh that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh Jose, can we get the raid message going? The the sub the sub raid cuz we all be subbing subs. There you go. Jose. Right, right, right. Oh. Oh, he's still in the fucking shower, you bitch. <laughs> this is what you get. He's gonna come back and he's gonna be like, why the hell am I, am I in this person's stream? And it's like, hey, we finished the painting. You're gonna have to go back and rewatch it. <laughs> Okay, so I know who we're gonna raid. Uh, BM. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this before before we leave. Um, I will be taking the entirety of December off. So November thirtieth, which is a Monday, will be the last day that I'm gonna be streaming for a while. Um, I'm going to make it a long stream, not a subathon. I'm going to make it a long stream, so I'm going to be starting it 
like earlier on in the day so probably around like maybe one or two uh so like an hour or two earlier probably one uh and we're gonna stream until like maybe about sixes so we're gonna be streaming for a few hours just as a little goodbye until next time kind of stream um so yeah but without further ado uh thank you all so much for watching and as i always say may the wind guide you until next time and we're gonna guide and the wind is gonna guide us to a friend so thank you all so much for watching and may the wind guide you until next time Goodbye.